I'd never given much thought to how I would die, though I'd had reason enough in the last few months. But even if I had, I would not have imagined it like this. I stared without breathing across the long room into the dark eyes of the hunter, and he looked pleasantly back at me. Surely it was a good way to die, in the place of someone else, someone I loved. Noble even, that ought to count for something. I knew that if I'd never gone to Forks, I wouldn't be facing death now. But terrified as I was, I couldn't bring myself to regret the decision. When life offers you a dream so far beyond any of your expectations, it's not reasonable to grieve when it comes to an end. Isabella Marie Swan was born September 13, 1987 in Forks, Washington to Renee and Charlie Swan. The new couple were over the moon to have such a beautiful baby. Her family took to calling her Bella. When she was just three months old, her parents Renee and Charlie decided to divorce, placing her into the custody of her mother. The small town of Forks was beginning to take a toll on Renee and she decided she needed to leave before she made up her mind to settle into the small town. After staying in California for about five years, Renee and Bella packed up and moved to the warmth of the desert of Phoenix, Arizona. While the weather was not ideal for Bella, she would play on the banks of the rivers while Charlie and his friend Billy Black fished. As Bella grew older, her natural clumsiness set her down a natural path of an interest in literature. This natural quietness to Bella's awkward personality made her a self-aware outcast among her peers in the big city of Phoenix. Bella's mother, Renee, eventually started dating a traveling baseball player. Not wanting her mother to miss out on the opportunity of travel with her new significant other, Bella decided to try for new opportunities by moving to live with her father. Charlie still resided in Forks, Washington. He was eager to meet his now teenage daughter, albeit a bit nervous to live with someone again after all the years of being divorced from Renee. Bella packed up her life in boxes and a suitcase and boarded the plane to Washington. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Book at the Moment podcast. We are here covering chapters one to five through Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And uh, yeah, I'm Affie. I'm Trisha. And I'm Megan. Welcome to the Book at the Moment. The book, book, (laughs) book at the moment, book, book, book at the moment. Yeah, Alex, our uh, our editor wrote us a little rap, and I oh. I feel like we need to be obligated at some point to record it because yeah. I mean it's so dumb. It's perfect. It's very special. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. I I think we really should have that as our intro at some. Point. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> And if you didn't tune in last time, we kind of just did a general nostalgia recording that was about two hours, which is quite a long time. Um, we just kind of covered. By. Oh yeah, we were like we said, we've kind of we were kind of stuck on how to get this episode started. But I was like, let's just start it. We kind of tend to get into the flow of conversation, and then everything works out. <laughs> but the last podcast just kind of covered the nostalgia that we have of the movies and the merch and just the total hurricane that Twilight was in 2008. And still is. And still is. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly. At least to us. (laughs) Oh, yes. You're welcome, world. (laughs) All right. So I guess it's best to start at the beginning, I would say, hopefully. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> it's always a good place it's always a good place to start yes N- a numerical order now we're gonna cha- start with chapter three <laughs> yeah we're just gonna start with chapter 26 
fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if there's chapter 26 in this book. Um, I don't see. actually know what chapter it is. Nope. Ends oh, at no. chapter 24. So um, we just will be talking close. about nothing. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about this, which Spice Girl we were before we got into this. Yeah. And we were like, this doesn't fucking matter. We need to start the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fight about this. <laughs> it's very right. easy for us to get off topic. Oh, God. Yeah. I Even mean, Alex. we've been friends for like ever. So. Oh, but- yeah. It's just general chitter. Like, our brains just work together like that. It's like my last two brain cells and all of your guys' <laughs> last two brain cells just form a mosh pit. And we just bounce off of each other. And that's the sound that you hear coming off of our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> it's just our collective well, and- brain cell mosh pit. Yes. Well, and me and I've literally known Megan since she was born, since yeah, exactly. we're cousins. <laughs> exactly. That is true. Lucky you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, welcome. All right, then. Moving okay. on. And soon. <laughs> and soon. All right. So, since we're starting at the beginning, I guess. <laughs> boring um the first chapter is first sight and we kind of just get a a general visual of bella and she's leaving her mother from phoenix arizona yes to head to forks washington which is way smaller than phoenix yes It's a logging town in the Olympic Peninsula of Washington State. And, I mean, I've never really been through Washington except the airport. So I've never really gotten to explore there. But I would like to since I've been living out west here for about three years. But I just haven't gotten the chance to explore Washington. Well, I've been through Spokane, but meh. Spokane is Spokane. (laughs) I have never really been to any of the western states except for Colorado. Like, that's the only west state that I've been to. And I I really want to go to a bunch of them. Cowboys and stuff. I think of, like, Colorado and Wyoming. So, I I think you got your Wild West experience. You got to come up to the the northwest and experience potatoes and (laughs) desert. Love potatoes. (laughs) mountainous forests all in the same breath because Idaho's on crack. Yes, that sounds amazing. I don't think I've ever been anywhere that's considered in, like in the West. Like I feel like I've mostly been in the like, you know, where I live, like Ohio and like surrounding places. I feel like the most like out of reach places I've ever been, like I've been to New York, Florida and Texas and that's like the farthest places I've ever been. Mm. Which is not, none of those are West, really. <laughs> right. Yeah, Texas I've is- mostly been to the Eastern states. Mm-hmm. It's just more, conv- it's just easier because we live in that general vicinity. And we live in the Midwest and no one wants to fly anywhere. So, no. <laughs> it's yeah, only 14 hours. So, let's yeah. just drive. <laughs> Road trips can be fun, though. Yes. But it looks like Bella decides to fly to uh, Washington here in the book from Phoenix. And she talks about how she loves the heat. She's, she likes the desert. And she kind of is apprehensive to leave. Mm-hmm. Which, but- I don't know. I've never been to... I've been through Phoenix. And it was really funny because, like, I landed there. And I could feel that it was a lot warmer out. It was nine o'clock and it, I checked my phone just to see how warm it was. It was like 75 degrees and everybody around there was like super old. There were so many old people and oh. it was like, everybody was in just like a big, huge coat. And I'm like, y'all are pussies. Like I'm, I'm going out <laughs> to Idaho where there's still like snow on the ground. But, um, her mom, I think, just like looking over the page and stuff, I think it's like her mom knows that she's really, Bella is very apprehensive to leave. Mm-hmm. And yeah, 
I don't know. I, mean, I find it I find it odd that Bella is so selfless. Right. She's definitely like more of a mother to her mom than her mom is to her. Yeah. Like I feel like she's always taking care of her. And it's I don't know, to me at least. Um like the the whole thing where like kids are a lot act a lot older than they are like i don't know <laughs> to me it's like really girl like <laughs> i when i was that age like i i would have been so selfish i would have been like yeah whatever mom like you can go run off with your boyfriend i'm gonna live in your house then <laughs> like right <laughs> i like the desert like i'm gonna stay here right yeah, then we, we would not have the great story of twilight exactly yeah and like one thing i thought was interesting was like Bella, like, when she did move to Fork, she cooked the meals for, like, her and Charlie. But also when she said that she when she was still living in Phoenix, she often cooked the food and, like, did the grocery shopping as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was just interesting to me because when I was 17, I didn't do any of that. So no. it's interesting that she, like, had that sense of, like, authority within her household. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, she plans the meal. She goes grocery shopping. And I mean, like, her mom would literally give her money. Right. I don't know, maybe, maybe those things seemed excited, exciting for her, or at least, like, fun to do, just because of the fact that she was such, like, a little bookworm. Um, she didn't play a lot of sports because she, she just talks about how naturally clumsy she is. And... Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe that was just a fun thing for her to do. Yeah. To get out of the house some and Yeah. <laughs> and she was also like she was cooking things like in the first five chapters, you know, she cooked steak and potatoes and she cooked chicken enchiladas. Well, which chicken enchiladas. <laughs> right? I was like Girl, I only knew how to cook, like, spaghetti and, like, ramen noodles when I was 17 years old. <laughs> I was a boss at making egg sandwiches. That was, like, I like my reign. <laughs> you were good at egg sandwiches. I used to crave those. I still crave those. Oh, girl, I'm still good at making them. So come on over. <laughs> I don't know. What was, what was I good at making back then? Mom, when, if, if mom was working late or something, she would usually have me make like a uh, beef and noodles or chicken and rice. And I really like chicken, chicken and rice. I still make that probably like once a week if I'm just looking for a quick meal because we use insert rice to make it. But mm -hmm. other than that, I would kind of help her with things. But I, I don't remember cooking on like full on meals until oh, I was no. like moved out. Yeah, I think I mostly made spaghetti or yeah just like helped my parents make stuff yeah i feel like that makes it this is kind of off topic but i feel like that makes it harder when you do move out then like you don't have like a foundation of mm -hmm, like right. what cooking even is so i mean i guess it's interesting that bella does have that foundation and that interest but it could also be because she was kind of you know, a bookworm and like kind of like a loner. She could have just kind of dabbled in it in like her free time. And so, uh, like she she gets to Washington, and she feels a little awkward around Charlie because last time she saw Charlie, I think she was kind of a little kid still. And um, she gets into the car and she's like, "Oh my god, I hope you put on the the police lights because they get into the cruiser that mm -hmm. Charlie uses because he's the the cop of he's a cop in uh forks washington he's the police chief in, oh, he's the police in forks chief. washington <laughs> there we go yeah i'm just used to saying like the cops <laughs> and so he gets he has a cruiser that he probably uses and i don't i don't know if like uh maybe he took time just right after work to go grab her or something maybe that's why he yeah. was in the cruiser right i'm not but sure because like, like in the movies, like he always only drives the cruiser, so like maybe yeah. he doesn't have enough. I don't know. Yeah, and like when you think about it, since he is the chief and he's there so much, 
it probably just wouldn't be super efficient for him to have another vehicle. Right. One thing I do kind of want to say, just, like, this is, like, just the their custody agreement of sorts is very interesting to me. Because the only time yeah. Charlie would really see Bella is one, like, was, like, in the summer, which is very intriguing to me. And I'm sure some of it has to do with the fact that she has to go to school. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Just But I don't really know. All the people I know who are divorced, major, like, majority of them live in the same state. So it's probably a lot easier. So I don't know if that has to do with, like, different, like, they live in different states. But I was reading it and I was like, that would be crazy. Like, I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter for like a month or so. So I kind of have some uh, input on this, actually, or insight, at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, My husband, actually, uh, his dad got custody of him. So it's kind of the opposite. Um, His dad got custody of him when he was very young. And she lived in Idaho. His mother lived in Idaho and his dad lived in Ohio. So his dad would actually have to get on the plane with him when he was still like a baby and not old enough to be like escorted by a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. He would have to go on the plane with him and ride with him clear to Idaho and then get back on the plane and then come home. (laughs) Like basically drop him off to be with his mom. I want to say that was every three months. Oh, that would be awful. Yeah. I think that was before he, his dad officially got custody of him. But when his dad got custody of him, um, my husband would go and fly to see his mom one month out of the summer, like one month out of the summer. Yeah. And now that it was because of the fact that, I mean, he was in school now. So, um, right. They, he, I mean, they wanted him to focus on that and then go see his mom during the summer. So right. maybe, I, I think that's literally the reason why. I think the next thing that we come to is like her and Charlie riding home together. Mm-hmm. And Charlie's he, really yeah, Charlie's just kind of awkward. Like they're both kind of awkward. And um, you hear that she like calls him Charlie. She doesn't really call him dad like in her head, but she has to call him dad to his face. Mm-hmm. So you see yeah. that like, because oh, I think like, yeah, like because she didn't grow up with him. Like, I feel like her mom was always calling him Charlie. That's mm-hmm. just me speculating. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I think that's interesting that she thinks of him only as Charlie and not dad. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's actually like, this is my first read through of the book. There's another part within the first five chapters where She's, I think she's talking to Edward and she is saying, like, like he calls her Bella and she's like, like, how do you know my name? And he's like, oh, well, everyone knows your name. Like, like everyone knows that you were coming here. And she's like, yeah, but why did you call me Bella? She's like, I'm sure my dad calls me Isabella behind my back. So I feel like that kind of stems from her calling her dad, Charlie. She expects her dad to call her Isabella not to her face basically oh yeah that makes sense it's like that's what she does to her dad so she expects him to do the same but i don't know kind that's of like fairly true because yeah. he calls her bells and i so if i remember correctly i know this is kind of coming off of the the actual twilight book um but i've read midnight sun and midnight sun is a spinoff of twilight from edward's perspective Mm-hmm. And he actually, I think, feels like he screws up when he calls her Bella because of the fact that he can read minds so he knew her name without having to ask anybody or ask her personally. And, right. And so uh, he was just kind of like, oh, well, you're, you're new. You're like fresh meat. Everybody knows you. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, spoiler alert, he can read minds. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Well, I, we've kind of determined la- since the la- last podcast that there yeah. are no spoilers in this. Y'all, yeah. it's been 10 years. You need to get caught up on this. <laughs> like, right. Come on, jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> um, so speaking of cars, they're riding back home to Charlie's bachelor pad. And... Charlie lets Bella in on the fact that he already has a vehicle for her. And um, the vehicle is actually a big, huge truck. She kind of refers to it as a tank. A heavy Chevy. uh, Yeah, a heavy Chevy. And I know in the movie it was like a a 1966, I think, which is like tanks. Mm -hmm. Um, If you've seen them in real life, they're massive. (laughs) And... um, he got it from Billy Black. And Billy Black is his fishing buddy that Bella and him used to go fishing with during the summer. And she doesn't really remember him because I guess that she didn't care to fish. Um, I think that just goes back into the fact that she's quiet and she just prefers to read. And I don't know, just just for me, like that would be weird to me as like a kid or something, like just not wanting to do that, just wanting to stay in the house. I'd be like, God damn, you're a kid. Like, get out there and play. <laughs> like, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go sit on like the beach or something. I don't know. When I was whenever I was around like water or something as a kid, I was just very entertained. Oh yeah, for sure. Like how can you not be? But she's always just been so awkward and clumsy that yeah. anything she just falls doing. <laughs> That's true. She probably was like, I'm going to kill myself if I try to fish somehow. somehow. Right. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, she, she finds out that it's pretty old. She's like, oh, God. But then she actually sees it. And she's like, oh. Ooh, I got a whip. Yeah, she loves it. Yeah, I was kind of surprised how instantaneously she, like, fell in love with it. Because when they were originally talking about, like, the idea that Charlie bought her a car and he was she saying was it was... afraid. <laughs> yeah, he was saying it was old. But then she saw... But I don't know if it was the fact that, like, when you see something, you're like, oh, my God, this is mine. Like, I don't know if that played a role where she was like, this is something that's, like, mine. So she, right. like, liked it because it was, like, something she could call her own. Yeah, right. exactly. And, I mean, when you're a teenager, at least, like, you don't you don't want to get, like, the fancy shit. Like, I mean, sure, it'd be great to walk out on your 16th birthday and have Trans Am sitting in your driveway. <laughs> but Trans Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I, especially as, like, a teenager, I was like, I'm going to make mistakes driving right. or i'm gonna make mistakes parking like that's how you learn things and you don't want to give your kid like this big fancy car so i mean i don't know <laughs> i'm yeah i was glad to have something that it was like all right this is yours be careful with it but it's it's not new <laughs> right and the dealio on this <laughs> But, like, she says it's, like, a truck that's for her. Like, she's so clumsy, and that thing is a tank, and nothing can take her down in it. Like, she could run over a whole fucking family, probably, and it would be (laughs) fine. (laughs) Yeah. It's, like, Like, the opposite of what – it's the opposite of what Bella is, and I think that's why she likes it. And that's why I think I find her truck just, like – I don't know, in the movies, too. Like, you see it all the time. Like, she she gets in there to – um she hops in there all the time to go see people and you see it in the movies all the time and i don't know i think that's why i personally like the truck is just very it's bella i don't know like for some reason even though it's like the exact opposite of her i think it's why it suits her so well i remember after seeing the first movie i was like oh my god when i get older i want an old chevy truck like that's just goals (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> there was one on sale not too far away from our house, and me and Taylor were like, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" Like, oh my god, you should have got it. <laughs> those old ass Chevys are just like they're just a cool truck. One thing 
I do want to say it's kind of pushing the conversation forward a little bit. That's okay. Um, one thing, because I'm a new reader to this series, yes. this saga. I'm a new thing, because when you first read it, like they don't like necessarily say why Bella is like moving to forks until a li- like it's like a couple chapters in like a few chapters in when they finally describe why oh, she's moving to right. forks so when i was first reading it especially in the first chapter she has so much disdain for living like being in forks like she seems like she genuinely hates it mm-hmm. so when i was first reading it i was like why is she even here right. yeah like, she why did she, even she move? gives off the impression of just being kind of standoffish and i don't know uh what's the word i'm looking for here just kind of negative nancy i don't know she seemed, <laughs> yeah she seemed genuinely depressed like she yeah. was depressed to be there like she wanted to like cry herself to sleep because she was in <laughs> forks which i mean also i don't know if this is how forks washington actually is but in the book it rains so far it rains almost like every single day and i don't know if that's how it actually is in forks or not so i actually I- looked this up because i was pretty curious and it is like one of the, the i think um as in the context of only towns in the united mm-hmm. states i think um the other one is like the aberdeen reservoir and aberdeen was like i want to say like maybe not it's not too far away from Forks. It's the same area, and fun fact, it's also where Kurt Cobain was born. And hmm. um, I think it it's like the reservoir there actually gets the most rain. And then there's like a mountain in Oregon, and then Forks sits at number three for like the most rain in the United States. But I mean, like it's an actual town versus like a reservoir and a mountain so like it is it definitely it's like it rains there every day almost <laughs> mm, dang that would suck yeah. though mm-hmm. i mean obviously not for the colon but <laughs> yeah i don't know we don't we don't get a lot of rain here because i live in like a mountainous desert and that just means i kind of like the elevation is pretty high and we still get like snow and stuff because we're so high up but we don't get a ton of rain. And, like, when we do, it's just, like, ugh. Like, you don't want to leave the house. I mean, like, it's even, like, you don't want to go to work almost. It's, like, you just want to lay in bed and hibernate. Right. So, just the fact that it rains there every day, it would just be, like, what do you do? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Every time it rains here, I'm, like, oh, I just want to go home and read. Like, that's all I want to mm-hmm. do when it rains. Drink some tea. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd be curious to find out, like, kind of what the the main career field is there. Like, what draws people to Forks, Washington? Because, like, I don't know. You know, usually people move somewhere because of a job or whatever, family. And, and it's nine times out of ten, it's because of a career. And I don't know. Maybe if it's because, like, I don't know. When I think of Washington, I think of, like, logging. So I wonder if, like, it's right. so there and live there just because they're loggers or something. And I feel like this town, like most of the people who live there have lived there for generations. Yeah. Like they say, like when Bella, Bella's like the new girl and she's like one of the first in like years because no one ever moves there. Everyone Mm -hmm. just has grown up there together. Kind of like where we're from. Uh huh. (laughs) And I think we talked about it in the last podcast. It's like, it didn't matter who you were, like, you, you still had kind of, like, even if you were just totally weird or an asshole, it was, like, you were still kind of popular anyways because of the fact that you were new, like, right. I don't know, I, and I feel like when kids grow up together like that, they kind of remember you as who you were in, like, kindergarten and first grade, and mm-hmm. they don't they don't really want to get to know you they've already made your judgment, their judgment on you. So it's like they being a new kid, I think would, would be interesting just because you wouldn't have that judgment and they like you more than that perspective. Right. Yeah. 
And what she says, she says like Forks High School has only 357 students. And I think that's less like, than what we have. Well, we graduated with about 80. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's around the same. Yeah, and I don't know if she just meant the high school or if like like Forks. Yeah, I is think it, it's is just elementary the high school. and middle school or well, it says Forks yeah. High School. Forks High School. All right, yeah, that yeah. would probably be about the same size as. Yeah, when I was reading that part, at first I thought, "Wow, that's a lot," but I was thinking in regards to, like, I feel like when I think of high school, I think about only like your graduating senior class, and ours was like significantly less than that. But mm -hmm. now that you guys are talking, I'm like, oh, wait, they probably meant the entire high school, like, population <laughs> of students. I was like, that makes a lot more sense because yeah. I was like, geez, I'm like, she's acting like 300 people's nothing. I'm like, that's a lot of people. Right. I'm just, I want to read this, the sentence where she, t or the, like, a tiny paragraph where she talks about this just so okay. you can get, like, the concept or whatever. So it says... Forks High School had a frightening total of only 357, now 58 students. There were more than 700 people in my junior class alone at home. All the kids here had grown up together. Their grandparents had been toddlers together. So that like, so there's 357 students in the whole school and she had 700 students in just her junior class back home. That's crazy. That's I, I can't imagine having that many people oh, at no. my school. And I know, like, um, like we didn't live too far away from, like, a bigger high school that was, um, like, even in sports and stuff, they were in a different size than us because their school was so much bigger. Like, we couldn't even play sports against them. Right. Um, but even then, I feel like compared to just, like, actual big cities, like, it wasn't that big and right. i yeah it's just like the thought of having that many people around me all the time it seems overwhelming mm -hmm. i don't think i would have survived like i think i think about it like when i was in high school and stuff i was like oh you know like i just think this place is too small for me like i just have too many interests that aren't popular here and i think that's why people aren't really friends with me if i was in a bigger school like there'd be more people to hang out with and they would like want to talk to me but mm -hmm. i don't know just thinking about it now like as just an introvert i don't think i would have survived that <laughs> like I'm, oh yeah i'm glad i went to a small school because there was just so much less to deal with like yeah there's still drama yeah there's still like you have your bullies and your assholes, but mm -hmm. I don't know. You also have those people that it's like you grew up with them and you just right. have the comfort of like, you know, their parents, you know who they mm -hmm. are. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's comfy in a way when you think back on it. Right. Uh, she gets to the house, and she only... They only have one bathroom. Yeah, they only they have one small bathroom that she has to share. Which, I, I mean, guess... that's not too bad. No, There's only especially two people. With dad. Right. Because I'm when I think about my dad, like, my dad doesn't... He barely spends any time in the bathroom, like... Right. And I had... and stuff. When I was growing up, we had one bathroom for... All of us. Like, there was, like, eight people living in the house at one point with one bathroom. And Jesus. we made it work. <laughs> one bathroom with just your dad, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I don't know. I feel like with him being the, sh the sheriff and stuff, like, he probably gets up a lot earlier than her. I don't know. Just from chapter one, like, I know I've, I'm in the part of the book personally, like, because I've just been reading a lot. Um, I'm in the part where she's kind of dealing with, with uh, the enemy vampires, just kind of <laughs> in a vague terms. Um, mm -hmm. But 
Um, I don't really remember her talking much about eating breakfast with Charlie. Maybe yeah, every I once think, in a while. I think most of the time he was already gone uh-huh. by the time she got up. So, yeah, I mean, and he probably showered the night before. At least most <laughs> men I know do that. So, yeah. Um, Megan, do you want to read your one chapter you wanted to read on nine? Oh, the part on nine. Well, it's actually, oh, yeah. there's a part on nine and news on 11. It's like a continuation. So this is like when Bella, she's all settled in, um, in Charlie's home. And so she's, you know, she's trying to get fully settled. And there's this part on chapter nine where she says, because she talks about how, um, if it was her mom being there with her, her mom likes to, like, be right there with her and kind of hover over her. And sh- if she was trying to unpack, her mom would be, like, right there. But Charlie is a lot like Bella, so she- he lets her have her space. So this is kind of after all that. And she says, It was nice to be alone, not to have to smile and look pleased, a relief to stare dejectively out the window at the sheeting rain and let just a few tears escape. I wasn't in the mood to go on a real crying jag. I would save that for bedtime when I would have to think about the coming morning. So she's basically thinking about when she goes to bed. She has to think about going to school the next day, so she's going to sob. <laughs> and then on the <laughs> next, on like the, a couple pages later, on page 11, she's talking about how she's trying to go to sleep, but she can't sleep. And then this, I have this one sentence underlined on page 11, and it says, I didn't sleep well that night, even after I was done crying. Mood. I just really, I was about to say, I really related to that because, especially if like you're the new girl at school and you're like stressed, you're already in a place you don't necessarily be. Yeah, it's raining. You have a perspective on that actually, because yeah, to be I was, yeah, I was homeschooled and then I went to public school and that man, really that was um, quite an interesting transition I had to make. Yeah, I, I just couldn't even imagine. Kind of like, I don't know. It it seemed like for the longest time, like I didn't even hear you guys talk. Like I noticed, like you and Ashley are very close, even from the get go. Like especially since you guys look almost exactly alike, that helps a lot. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, like obviously they're really close. And then just like, I think you noticed me reading something, and you were like, I know what that is, <laughs> no, right? Like, my god they're adorable right i can't even like (laughs) recall the exact moment that me and Affie became friends it's been i feel like it's been so long like i feel like we had mutual interests because when i first came into public school me and my sister were really into like (laughs) j-pop and like a bunch of like japanese related things like back then like i would watch anime i don't watch it as much anymore I still read, like, manga. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay, so I read, like, manga and stuff like that still. But I feel like that's kind of what we might have bonded over. I honestly can't even remember it's been that long. But yes, I feel like when I first went to high school, like, went to what was middle school, I was in the seventh grade when I went back to public school. But I just feel like it was such a culture like a culture shock and I was like constantly observing people to like see how am I supposed to act so I feel like I had no true sense of who I was as a person I was like constantly like mimicking to try to like fit in because I was not only was I homeschooled but I was homeschooled under a Christian homeschool program so I felt brainwashed to the source <laughs> just to be a certain type of person so i felt like i had no sense of who i was so i don't know i felt like when i was reading this i really just i don't know i related to bella i was like am i her <laughs> <laughs> slowly drags finger down the book <laughs> you? Well, i just i feel like i got a sense that she felt she was extremely ordinary and that there was like nothing special necessarily about at least in the first five chapters that's as far as i've read a little bit of the sixth chapter but 
I feel like she felt like she was really ordinary. And like I've always felt extremely ordinary. So it's interesting to have a person who's, you know, you feel like you can relate to, but also she like gets the hottie. <laughs> and like everybody low key wants her. I'm like, girl, when is that gonna happen to me? Yes. Oh. In the first chapter, I feel like that's where we. In the first chapter, that's where we get introduced to a lot of the characters. Yeah. In the book, like I think we find out, we find out vaguely. I think that's in the chapter we find out vaguely about the Cullens, mm-hmm. and I think like that's where Mike and like potentially Eric and Jessica come into play. And it's funny like, to yeah. me just because like she does talk about how much of an outcast she was in Phoenix, but mm-hmm. um she just fits in very well here like her appearance she talks about just like how she's so pale and just she thinks she's kind of plain looking but i mean i don't know beauty is in the eye of the beholder my love you're Mm -hmm. good um so she does kind of fit in here she her mom made sure that she had all kinds of winter gear so she's like good on that part she's not wearing like a bikini this class like (laughs) She has a big parka Yeah, she had as her carry-on on the plane. She said that that was, it felt like a biohazard suit because I'm sure she's not used to wearing, like, mm-hmm. coats and stuff that are actually serving a purpose. Right. So the first person to kind of notice her, she, um, she notices that he is kind of oily, kind of greasy kid with skin problems. Mm -hmm. And he knows her name. Um, As soon as they really start talking to each other, he knows her name. And she's kind of like, oh, God. Right. And And um, she he comes up and says, you're Isabella Swan, right? And she corrects him and says, immediately, Bella. (laughs) She's like, boy, my name's Mm, Bella. (laughs) No, get it right. Same a name, same a name. (laughs) And it's kind of uh, it's funny to me just because like he's talking to her and he's obviously like, Fresh meat, like, and Bella is very, she just gives him kind of one word responses. And <laughs> yeah, he, and I, I think he gets how, the point yeah. eventually. <laughs> I love how she like tries to use sarcasm on him. Like, yeah, he's like, and he just thinks it's look, funny. <laughs> he's like, you don't look very tan. And she's like, my mother's part albino. And he's just like, uh, okay. And she's like, um, people here suck, they don't understand sarcasm. And she gets into a class, um, and she she has a friend that um, was in her Spanish and trig classes that gets her to the cafeteria for lunch, and I'm really glad that she had her because I think that is honestly one of, if you were a new student somewhere, I think that probably would want be one of the hardest things to do would be, like, getting your lunch because that's, like... That's, like, one of the most distinctive things I remember about school was, like, the lunch table situations, <laughs> like. Right. I remember. Events. <laughs> I remember one year there was a new boy. I think he was in our grade. Obviously, I won't name names. But mm-hmm. he was sitting by his- himself. And, like, I was, like, oh, we should go sit with him. So, like, we literally all went and sat with him. And, yeah. like, we became friends with him. Uh-huh. And then. And then he moved away again. Yeah, We were (laughs) friends with him while he was there. (laughs) Yeah, he was cool to talk to. And I think that's kind of a a skill people need to develop, too, is just, like, having conversations with people you don't really know. Right. I need to work on that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, as somebody that's kind of introverted, it's very hard. And I lose interest in conversations really easily. And I'm like, I'm kind of an asshole, but it's like... I'm going to yeah. go home and sew now. But <laughs> so we're in the lunchroom and then lunchroom. Bella sees some people at a lunch table. Some beautiful people. Some beautiful people. The beautiful people. Who 
are all sitting with trays of food that haven't been touched. And she asked who they are from the I, girl I in her Spanish class. Um, and she tells them, I'm just going to read like what she says. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it explains it. But it says, that's Edward and Emmett Cullen and Rosalie and Jasper Hale. The one who left was Alice Cullen. They all live together with Dr. Cullen and his wife. So, obviously, they're explaining the Cullens, mm -hmm. the main people of the story, other than Bella. And um, I, honestly, I don't know, as much as people kind of, I, like, they probably were at one point kind of, like, the object of fascination, but now they're kind of the secret object of fascination between the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, since they, everybody knows so much about them. Right. And they just keep to themselves. But everyone's like, oh, my God, they're beautiful. They've been there for four years, they said. So, like, they had their time of being the fascination. And then they never talked to anyone. So just yeah. left them alone. And I, I don't know, still, like, they, I don't know how anybody didn't notice, like, that they just don't eat their food. I'd be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> like, Right? There's, they just I know, starve themselves. I remember there's, like, a, there's, like, a specific part in the book where, which is in the first five chapters, like, when, which I'm kind of skipping ahead, but when, you know, Belle almost gets hit by that car. And Edward saves her. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. But um, she was talking about how no one had noticed, like, no one saw Edward, like, right next to Bella. But also no one had noticed that he was, like, far away from her as well. She mm -hmm. was the only one who had noticed that. And she was, like, thinking to herself, like, why am I the only one who notices these things? But then she kind of realizes, like, I'm the only one who's, like, intentively like making it a point to notice mm -hmm. these things right yeah because i i feel so, like, like they're the collins are probably very trained in disregarding people like it would be in my opinion like okay so we know they're vampires obviously. and <laughs> just in my opinion it would just be really hard to make the effort to go back to high school as a hundred year old vampire of kind of just like okay like edward has powers like like they're all very like they just have just skills and stuff far beyond humans and it's like it would be hard not to show off it would be hard like i don't know like they don't want to make friends with anybody because it's like they just think that they're annoying teenagers Right. And I don't know. I th I think the idea that they're in high school and stuff, it would just be so hard. Like, just to just for the fact of like the charade of um a family that you know just moves around because their dad's a doctor. Jessica says that they are all together, which is oh so yeah. Weird. I would think that was so weird. Like if somebody was like, oh yeah, they're all like adopted children, like that they adopted. And I don't know, I feel like they would have to be like, I hope that he would have adopted him as they were older, because I, that'd be fucking weird. Like, when you're all raised together as kids, like, you right. would develop a bond, like a family bond with each other regardless, I feel like. Right, it's almost like the step-sibling trend yeah. thing going around. Yeah. An anime. Anime is the worst for that shit. And like, yeah. yeah, this is top trending on Pornhub right now. So. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, keys. Uh, keys. But yes. So gross. So like, they're together, and they live together. Mm -hmm. Like, I, so that probably like once they found that out too, I'm sure they were just kind of like, Ugh, like, <laughs> no, like, yeah, they're all beautiful, and like, you want to know more because they're so serious and that's kind of just like what you know about them is just what everybody else knows like and right. i don't know just like the fact that they stick to themselves i at least me just 
like as you said, you have a natural instinct to kind of reach out to the loner mm-hmm. sometimes. Um, and I'm, yeah. I'm surprised more people just weren't suspicious of them because, like, obviously, we know the story and we know that they all come from very differing backgrounds. Mm-hmm. So, like, they probably don't necessarily feel like this is my brother and this is my sister so much. No, oh, no. Yeah. Since they all, like, date each other. But, like, as an outsider who doesn't know that, like, I feel like you would look at it and be like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, in that house. Right. Like, <laughs> Like, I would be question marks all over. I would want to know, like, what, like, how, like, if she would have, like, if I was Bella and Jessica told me, yeah, but they're all together, I'd be like, what do you mean they're all together? Like, that's, it just, it sounds weird. And they all live together, like, Mm -hmm. right. They they better be sleeping in separate rooms, you know, like, what the fuck? (laughs) Right. It's like, how how would you just let that happen? I, like, because I don't know. I feel like as parents, you'd kind of discourage that. But mm-hmm. oh, also at this part, that's when she like first notices Edward. She's like, "Ooh, that <laughs> reddish hair." Woman. Like she's like, "He fine." <laughs> He's kind of like <laughs> he's a snack. Um, like Jasper, yeah. I feel like. Jasper kind of always is described as looking like he's in pain. Right. And, I mean, that's because he can feel so many different emotions. Spoiler alert. But, um, and then Emma is the beefcake. And Edward mm-hmm. is described as being very boyish looking in appearance. Right. So, like, he's he's very statuesque, but he's obviously, like, he looks pretty youthful. Mm-hmm. So... Then, on to biology. On to biology two, two, and since Bella's a genius. <laughs> and um, Angela is the one who walked with her, and she was very quiet, and she liked that. Mm-hmm. And when she gets into biology, she notices that Edward is there, and there's only one seat left next to him. And when she goes to walk there. Her hair gets rustled by the fan, and he tenses up and looks really mad at her for no reason. She has no idea why. Yeah, and she's like, what the hell? Like, why, why did this kid, like, just instantly tense up and look like he wants to kill me? Right. She, what did I do? <laughs> she smells her hair. Imagine. Sorry, yeah, imagine. she smells her hair, and she's like, ooh. It smells like strawberries. What the fuck, dude? Right. Like, imagine how self-conscious you would feel if, like, the most attractive guy you've ever seen in your life was, like, utterly so disgusted at your existence. <laughs> like, I would feel so bad. I, I would be like, I can't believe I have to sit next to him. And, like, yeah. <laughs> he's acting. Just like, sorry, I'm alive. <laughs> right? I would, I would probably cry. Like, I think I would actually cry. I say, I can't. I need to be excused. Like. I would well, just go cry in the bathroom. Not to mention, he's like the whole time. Like she like notices that his like he's like super tense. He's like clenching his fists. His eyes are like black, mm-hmm. and like it's he like it looks like he has like diarrhea. Like it's just yeah, like, like he's <laughs> about to shit himself. <laughs> like, and she's like, "What did I do?" Right. She what literally said. Happening? She literally thought if looks could kill suddenly ran through my mind like literally girl he can kill but she don't know that yet (laughs) yeah (laughs) right and then then not to mention like after the fact like after that whole weird encounter where she's like what am i doing what have i done to you he like is asking to like basically be moved out of the class i'd be like excuse me right I would be so perplexed as to what I did. I was like, this is like my first day of school. I don't know who you are acting like I'm some stinky ass. <laughs> I mean, thank you. I mean, she was in the office and she was like trying to keep, like, oh no, it wasn't about me. It had to be about someone else. Like, there's no way I could have done something. Yeah, to this guy she literally already. did nothing. 
Right, exactly. Right. Except smell fucking delicious. <laughs> and, that, and I feel like, like, I feel like this is how I would react to, like, if it was my first day there, I would think, oh, well, it couldn't have been me because he doesn't know me. But at the same time, you like she had, you would still have that like twinge inside of you where you're like, but what if it is me? Because mm-hmm, like that's right. kind of what she went through. She was like, maybe she's gonna it, jump to every conclusion. Me. Yes, because I would if I, I know. It's like anxiety. my anxiety, my anxiety. Right, exactly. <laughs> so kind of before we get to the point where Edward, she runs into Edward like actively trying to get out of that class. For mm-hmm. whatever reason, she runs into this guy named Mike. Our boy Mike. Oh, Mike. Mikey. Mike, 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 Mike. So he walks her out of class and sh- he wouldn't shut up, basically. She, like, just says he's a chatter. So obviously there's conversation going on. Mm-hmm. that's very one-sided that she didn't even bother to really like go into detail about right like and it doesn't yeah now they're and she she goes in to say how the school has four years of mandatory gym class fuck that <laughs> Yeah, I actually so mad. Well, I actually really liked gym class because I was I don't I'm just too competitive. Oh, I yeah? love playing sports. Yeah, so Bella doesn't like Jim. Um, right. Because she's, so she's kind of she's clumsy. And people are going to see how clumsy she is um, if she's in gym class. Yes. And after they deal with that, um, the secretary, she notices, and um, Edward is in there. Mm-hmm. And he is trying to get out of class for some reason. And. Mm-hmm. The because secretary she is like, yeah, she stank. Her pussy stank. <laughs> and your pussy stank. <laughs> oh, I just snorted. <laughs> I get, I get snorty eventually when I start laughing. So you do, you can snort. You can snort in the podcast. <laughs> this is, this is the snort zone. This is snort zone. Snort safe zone. Snort safe zone. It not sounds cocaine. like cocaine. Like, not cocaine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, no, not cocaine. Okay. <laughs> Just laughing snorts. Unless, unless you like cocaine, because it Wait. smells nice. Wait, but we ain't advocating that. No way. No. We're, We're not go telling to you to do cocaine, but, but if you're you do to. it, don't tell us that you do it. We don't yeah. want to know. This is don't ask, don't tell. Snort free zone. <laughs> <laughs> no drugs. But, um, so the secretary tells Edward, all right, no, we can't, we can't do that, basically. Uh, sorry about your luck. So, um, the secretary notices that Bella is, like, kind of distraught, and she's like, how did your day go? And Bella's, like, fine, and just kind of runs out to her car where she can be upset all and kind of lonesome. I don't know why, but I just imagine going, fine like she's talking to her like, it was fine oh. mom it was fine mom just leave me alone <laughs> like charlie opens the door to her room and he's like, hey bell how was school i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> me whenever i'm grumpy i'm like i'm fine yeah and he's just like shuts the door he doesn't even say anything he's like well okay, okay then <laughs> hey, bye. in the book bella describes mike as being golden retriever like because he kind of follows her around like a puppy dog and there's one point in the book and i believe it's when they're talking about going to push but i can't remember exactly but i think it's about that where she describes him as like he was excited so she imagined him like wagging his tail because she views him like as being kind of like a dog <laughs> Uh, oh, like, Bella. That's how we act. My name is Mike. Mike. Mike wants to go to the beach. Would you come to the beach, Bella? Because 
he's so just like eager and enthusiastic to like spend time with her that like that's kind of how she views him i feel mm-hmm. like that really screwed him over because <laughs> now you are viewed as like an innocent cute little dog like mm-hmm. <laughs> right which people want that yeah but not as a lover he right. kind of reveals his character, his true character later, though, which is a bit well, possessive. Oh, he becomes very, contr- yeah, and I've already noticed this, where he's, like, very just, like, like, he kind of feels like he has, like, like, he has this territorial thing. Yeah, like, just entitlement. Bella. Because yeah. he asks, and he's nice. Like, yeah, he's a chud. But, so. We finished yeah. chapter well, one. Yay! Yay! Well, that, that was only chapter one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. We've been. So, uh, I gotta what, get up early. I'm. I'm happy to report that chapter two is kind of lackluster. Um, it's basically Bella going through the second day and how she's just anxious that biology is coming up and she's gonna run into Edward again and. She's not no- going to know how he's going to react because, I mean, he acted like a fucking monster last time. Mm-hmm. And and so, luckily, she walks in to biology and he's not there. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, in lunch, she notices he's not there. But, I mean, sometimes people aren't in lunch for whatever reason. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, so... Towards he gets the, the biology, he's not there. And then it's basically he go she goes just skips like two weeks, basically. I yeah. think. Like a week she and does, a half. She does kind of note that um she goes shopping, grocery shopping for her and Charlie, because mm-hmm. we were talking about how it, we found it odd that Bella is kind of so um traditional, kind of just cooks and stuff. But I mean, that's, there's nothing wrong with having interests in that. I mean, right. Sure. But I just find it, we, we find it funny that she's like that just because she's so young. Pretty responsible. Oh, Megan, did you want to tell us the, um, your, uh, your little aside that you liked about Charlie getting home with his police equipment? Oh, yes. Yeah. There was this one specific part in, Chapter two that I had book that I had, you know, a little bookmark on because I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. Maybe it's bad that I thought it was funny, but I no, related to it. <laughs> and that's why I thought it was funny. So it's on page 35 in chapter two. And it's basically talking about how Charlie comes home from work and he puts his little like police belt with like his gun and everything like up on the little. Um, Daddy's like, belt. Coat yeah, hook. like yeah, on like the coat hook, basically. And there's this part where Bella says, When I came here as a child, he would always remove the bullets as soon as he walked in the door. I guess he considered me old enough now not to shoot myself by accident and not depressed enough to shoot myself on purpose. <laughs> I said, if that is not a mood because that's dark humor. Like, it is very dark Meyer. humor. <laughs> it's dark humor. Well, and like my fiance, he likes to protect himself. So like he has guns here. He does oh, yeah. obviously do doesn't too. remove the bullets. And like Wait, I mean, know, why? Yeah, I, mean, I we think don't have about- <laughs> we don't have any kids in the house here on our end. So it's like, why would we do that? I mean, the it's concealed. I have mine in a bag, basically by my bed, because especially when my husband, since he's in the military. When he is deployed or whatever, I mean, like, that thing is locked and loaded. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I remember um, when I was living with my sister and her husband, uh, they went on their honeymoon. So I was home by myself. And he, like, gave me the code to the gun case and was like, if anyone breaks in, aim for the knees. <laughs> and I was like, um, okay, I've never shot a gun, but I got you, boo. <laughs> And we Did live it? in, like, a small town with 400 people. Oh, yeah. People, so I don't think anyone's going mean, to break in. <laughs> there have been incidents, but everybody's packing heat these days. So you best right. watch this. I don't know. I just, I just think it's funny, too, that she notices that. Right. 
Well, and I, I feel like it makes her that much more relatable because I feel like a lot of people nowadays have a very deprecating sense of humor. And she kind but, of is mm-hmm. from our generation, even though, like, she was technically born in, was it 1987? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she is quite a bit older than us. But, I mean, I don't know. I have a, such a different view on, like, how people are older than me now. Like, back right. when I was in school and stuff, like, if you were two years older than me, I was like, oh, weird. But now it's like I'm friends with people that are, like, ten years older than me. <laughs> right. I feel like yeah. once you get in into your mid 20s or so everything a lot more vague mm-hmm. yeah like as far as like older people i feel like once you get into your mid 20s you kind of hit that point where you feel old mm-hmm. but you're like not necessarily old but mm-hmm. you feel ancient just because you're like you really realize i feel like when you start to get into that realm because that's like when you start to have to maybe potentially start to think about like getting your own health insurance stuff like that <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're like, I man, am I really like old now? And you don't right. like relate as much to like people younger than you. You relate more to like people older than you. Right. Definitely. And they can give you advice and stuff. Yeah. But so, I can't, so Bella has the dark millennial humor. Yes. And getting back into the chapter. <laughs> but there's one part where her and Charlie are having dinner together and she mentioned the Colin family and said they're all very attractive and Charlie said you should see the doctor Charlie said laughing it's a good thing he's happily married a lot of nurses at the hospital have a hard time concentrating on their work around him and I'm like is Charlie Charlie bisexual right he noticed Charlie's bisexual this is canon (laughs) this is canon (laughs) Charlie's bisexual all right oh my god (laughs) we got that representation here Charlie and Carlisle, I stand. I stand. He's <laughs> he's very defensive. I feel like um, Bella, is, because she doesn't want her dad to know that she's kind of taking interest in a boy. Right. And of course not. Even though she thinks like he hates her. So sh- maybe she does kind of have a negative opinion of them right now because of just of her first experience with Edward. Mm-hmm. Um, because... Uh, she just mentions something about like how mature they are. It's not her, Charlie. Um, but uh, yeah, he. Oh, okay. So she, I guess she just asks about him. She just yeah. asks about the Colin family, and Charlie kind of go, goes off on a tangent about how uh, like everybody likes to talk about him because they're new. Like, Dr. Colin has done a lot for this town. And I'm sure, like, with him being a sheriff, like, Charlie does have just the experience of working alongside, like, medical, like, the medical team and stuff that's in town. So Mm -hmm. I'm sure he does have experience with the Collins. And with Carlisle being so suave (laughs) and attractive, Mm. um... Um, I'm sure Charlie has had nothing but good experiences with them since they kind of know how to manipulate people since they've been around people for hundreds of years. <laughs> At least Carlisle. Carlisle is a spoiler alert. He's very old. <laughs> very old. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then we get back to school and Bella's goes through her whole day. And then she gets to lunch, and she sees. Or am I skipping a lot? Um, I mean, not really. She, I mean, they eat dinner that night. Yeah. After she gets home, and then, um, she gets to school the next day. It snows, and she, um, Mike, I think, asks her just how many times she's seen snow in her life, and. She mentions mm-hmm. that she's only seen snow on television. So right. this is Bella's first snow. Right. Yeah. And they get into the lunchroom and she noticed how model-esque they all look. Um, laughing and shaking snow off of themselves. The Collins I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Um, and I think Jessica. Jessica, um, I think is kind of a little more in tune and knows that Bella is just taking a little more interest in the Collins than usual. Um, And she's like, 
Oh, Edward is staring at you. And well, she's like, no, don't look at him. <laughs> yeah, and this is when Edward comes back to school after being gone for like a week and a half. So That's this a is good the point. This is the first time she's seen him since he looked like he was going to murder. And then was gone so, for two weeks. Right, exactly. And she had no idea why. She felt like it was that he was gone for two weeks, which, I mean, she would be right, but she didn't know mm-hmm. why. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah well when he comes back also he he talks to her and mm-hmm. if i was bella which i feel like she felt this way i would be so just confused I'd yeah like, very you literally taken act- back yeah like it's like you acted like i was disgusting and now you are actually talking to me like i yeah, feel like so- but, like, they get back from lunch, and, of course, after lunch, she has biology. And um, biology class, she's like, oh, Edward's here. What's he going to do? So she sits by him, and she's really nervous. And she doesn't want to look at him, so she just kind of starts nervously doodling in her notebook. And that is, like, 100% nervous fidget that I used to have in high school. So mm-hmm. She's probably drawing one of those single eyes. Like I'm pretty sure in draw. the movies, she like draws a pair of eyes. <laughs> no, uh-huh. we know what she drew. Remember we saw oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She drew hanging off of the ceiling hangs. fan. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Eggman hanging off of the fan. Um, so her first interaction with Edward. First positive Ooh. interaction. Positive. <laughs> Yeah, um, not the, oh my god, what is wrong with this man? Right. And so he says hello to her in a very musical voice. <laughs> We're about to do Edward ASMR. Hello. Hello. I'm just trying to mimic the way his voice sounded in the movie. Which, like... The hello? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect. So, like, just the description from the book as how Edward's voice sounded in the movie is, like, perfect. Like, musical. You're just like, oh, uh, what's this? And I I think I can do it. Do it. Hello? (laughs) (laughs) My head hit my mic stand. I'm sorry. (laughs) Is that right? Perfect. Do it again. We need it. We need a replay. Slow motion. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that was, no, that one was that one was worse. Um. It was in slow motion. <laughs> that way our brains could process it. <laughs> our two brain cells. He says, "My name is Edward Cullen. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself last week. You must be Bella Swan." And that's when she's like, how did you know my name? How did you know my name? And he's like, oh, I think everyone knows your name. Girl, you a celebrity. And she's like, no, but how how did you know to call me Bella? And he's like, oh, shit. I wasn't supposed to know that. Ah, yes. That's where. I mean, that's where. Peeping into people's brains. Yeah, that's where Midnight Sun comes that background there because me and athy have read that because we're nerds yeah i love me some twilight give me that edward class gets started in the ever polite edward cullen um says ladies first they're working on um a science experiment in class which is basically like recognizing different uh Phases of, uh, phases of cells and shit. The of mitosis. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> Book Bella is so much sassier and smarter. Mm-hmm. And she has like good comebacks and stuff. Oh I yeah, like, like she she gets a little sassy with him. Like she's she doesn't let Edward off the hook. Like right. Edward totally tries to just bypass the situation. Like he's like, I'm gonna charm her into like kind of thinking 
that this didn't really happen. Like we're right. we're having a do over here today, and Bella's like, "Oh, don't even fucking act like you didn't just try to eat me. Like you didn't just you didn't just act like you were like just a monster mm-hmm. on my first day of school." Like, also one thing about Bella, like she's very observant. Like she notices that his eye color is a different, or his mm-hmm. eye color is different, and she asks him if he gets contacts, and he's like, "No." Like, why would you ask that? But, like, he, I feel like he notices then that, like, she He's actually, in trouble. Yeah, like, she actually notices things. And, like, when they're in the lunchroom and stuff, she notices that the shadows under their eyes are all gone or different and stuff. So, like, she actually notices things that other people don't. So, I kind of feel like her being observant is kind of stems from her being a bookworm because reading books is basically just you hallucinating through the entire paper on pages. I've mentioned that to my fiance before that I can like picture what I'm reading in my mind. And like, he's not a reader at all. So he like, doesn't understand that. And I'm like, but literally I can like see what's happening on the page in my brain. I like, don't see the words. I see Mm -hmm. the people. If that makes sense. <laughs> oh, 100%. Because, I mean, that's why I was so obsessed with, like, books and stuff as a kid. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, at least now I kind of feel like I'm more distracted by other things. And that's why I don't read as much. But back when I was, like, bored and stuff, like, I I literally was in trouble in class at one point. Because instead of doing homework, I would read Harry Potter. And they were like, we think it's good that she has an interest in reading because Mm -hmm. god they would just shove that down your throat and when you were in school and that was how you get kids to not read but that's another rant for another time right yeah and stuff like that but that was like i i didn't have as much to do so i would literally sit there and imagine like all this other stuff like and what more interesting thing to do that with was like harry potter come on right and definitely like twilight and stuff because twilight was kind of the first romantic thing i got involved Oh, yeah, me too. I think Bella's kind of observant just because of the fact that she she probably does the same thing. Like, Mm -hmm. she is more in tune to picking up on details that other people might not just because she she can make her kind of just based off of vague descriptions. Right. And in the book, she says that she's reading Wuthering Heights again, and she's already read it for fun. But she's reading it, like, for fun, for class again. And I just read that. And that is, like, a difficult book to read because it was written in the 1800s. Yeah. And the language is just different if from she's, then. It's- right. If she's reading that for fun now, like, at 17, and I read that for fun at 25, and still I was like, oh, my God, what are they saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I think the only thing, like, of classic literature we read that I was, like, super interested in and, like, happy to know the details of was Beowulf. And that's just because, like, I don't know, Beowulf had a lot of details. Mm-hmm. And, like, the, they had translated Beowulf from Old English into something that was more palatable for people of today's language and English. So, I mean, that's probably why it was a little easier to read. Whereas Shakespeare is like literally written in like play format, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, plays literally are hard need to read. But um, so yeah, they're working on the project together, going over slides. And when he handed it to her, or no, he stopped her from taking out the slide because she, he wanted to check to make sure it was right. And he touched her, and she felt how cold his hands were. But along with that. She also felt like there was an electric current that had passed between them. So already there's a spark between them. (laughs) And I feel that. So like we we know that Edward reads minds, but Bella is very different to him because of the fact that he can't read her mind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like like it's probably really awkward for him to kind of ask her questions and stuff just because he's not used to doing that. He is able to he's able to deep dive into the average person's mind and kind of dissect them from the spot. And so he's kind of awkward and she's very standoffish. 
still. And I think it's just funny how sassy she is. Like, Mm -hmm. she knows what she's talking about. And she's not going to let this kid just, like, sass her around. Like, Bella is very hard-headed. And you kind of get an insight on this just because it's, like, you know, a lot of kids are intimidated by the Collins just because they're so beautiful. And Mm -hmm. I... And because, I mean, heck, they they know how to manipulate people. So I think he's really taken aback by her just because she doesn't let him boss her around. And I'm like, yes, queen. Like, yeah, you you tell him like she's not intimidated by him from what she shows. Like, she's very good at not showing she's intimidated. Right. There's this one sentence that I really like on page 49. It says... I grimaced at him, resisting the (laughs) impulse to stick out my tongue like a five-year-old and looked away (laughs) like mood girlfriend. (laughs) Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, like, genuinely enjoy the banter between Edward and Bella. Oh, yeah. It's just something about it. It's just very easy to read this story and imagine, like, yourself being Bella. A hundred percent, yeah. And so after after uh, they finish their science experiment and Edward leaves her with a much better experience than her first one. Mm-hmm. And Mike notices this as well. So Mike kind of hops over and this is where kind of he shows his true colors for the first time is like, you know, he he's prying. He's. At first, he kind of is like, oh, well, you're lucky you had him as a partner because, I mean, obviously, I didn't understand this, so you didn't. Right, because you're a dumb girl. Yeah, you're a dumb girl. (laughs) And so um, after she kind of uh, sets him in his place and just lets him know that she knows this stuff, like she's done it before, Mm -hmm. get over it, Mike. And she's like, Oh, Colin seemed friendly enough today. Um, and she kind of wonders what was with him. Because I know, I don't know, maybe he's acted this way before and Mike knows about it. But um, it's, he just continues on with chatter. But I, I think that's a, just a, a, a cool little insight we get where it's like, oh, Mike isn't just a puppy dog. Right. Mm hmm. One thing I also just like literally realized just now is when I was reading the first five chapters, Bella tries pretty, she tries to be polite to like Mike and Eric. Like she doesn't want to hurt their feelings. So she's very, like she'll say things and if she thinks they're too sassy, she'll kind of backpedal and make them sound a little bit nicer. But with Edward, it's kind of different because she's not afraid to like sass him. Mm hmm. And that's, like, something I didn't pick up till, like, just now when we were talking about it. And I was, like, reflecting back on the book. I was, like, because I know when she was, like, you know, rejecting the boys when it came to, like, going to the dance or anything else. She was actively trying to be, like, nice. Like, she didn't want to feel guilty, like, for making them feel bad. Right. So, but, like, with Edward, she was, like. I feel like she was like not af- as afraid to express her express like her genuine emotion kind of and which I think is good and I think we get a lot more of that in the book than we ever do in the movie. Like, oh, I mean yeah. we do get insight into her head more in the book than we do the movie because I mean in order to really write about stuff it's like you have to have that kind of insight. Right. If it's from first if it's from like character's perspective. And I as a person who didn't grow up being an avid reader, someone who got like more into reading as like an adult, like I obviously watched the movies first before I ever read the book. And so far, I've only read the first five chapters and I'm already reading it. And I'm like, I'd rather watch like a seven week long movie that literally plays out the book word for word just to like watch this in like live action oh, right yeah, like full detail. I know. Or like, like I, I wish a netflix series would happen really yeah. they need to get on that there are just certain aspects of the book that like you really learn to love and when you read it and those details aren't in the movie you just 
really regret that they were never put in the movie. But obviously, in the movie version, it can't be like 10 hours long. So they obviously have to cut things out. But you miss a lot of like the commentary between Edward and Bella, which mm-hmm. I enjoyed, which I have been enjoying the most so far. Yeah. After biology, Bella is just kind of like, okay, well, that was a lot different. And that was kind of all that she could think about. Like, uh, the the rest of the chapter is really short. And, like, she basically, the next thing she notices as she's leaving the parking lot, Edward is kind of looking at her and laughing because um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, so, I for- I forget it, what he said in Midnight Sun. Well, okay, so, but this one it says that she, or she got into her truck and then she was looking around and she noticed Edward Cullen was leaning against the front door of his Volvo. And then she was like, oh crap. So then he like, she like put it in reverse real quick and went to reverse out and she almost oh. hit the, Toyota Corolla that was behind her and was okay, like, okay, so oh, it crap. kind of uh, now that you say <clears throat> that, I kind of understand like, it kind of seems like he noticed her right, he noticed her about to hit the car he's like laughing at him. her yeah so he kind of got his his uh, he kind of picked up on the fact, alright, so maybe I do kind of have an effect on her right, exactly and so Bella wakes up the next morning and realizes thick snow on the ground and Bella's not used to the snow (laughs) and one thing that she notices or like once she gets to school she's like hmm I like didn't slip around the road as much as I thought I would and she's Mm -hmm. standing at the back of her truck and she realizes that there are little or snow chains on her tires and she's like oh my god that's so sweet of Charlie, and she's not used mm-hmm. to being taken care of. She's used to taking care of everyone else. Yeah, and I think that she's, um, what am I going to say? She's uh, sentimental, mm-hmm. for sure. So there is that part of her, which I think we don't get to see a lot, um, at least kind of in the beginning parts of the book, just because you get the part of she's taking care of everybody. Right. Um, so she, she notices and then she notices Edward, of course, because she says that that's kind of the reason why she's the most excited to say. Mm-hmm. And then... Oh, shit. She hears a high-pitched screech, and it was coming fast and painful, and it was painfully loud. And when she looked up, she saw a van coming at her, and she also noticed Edward standing over by his car. Because, I mean, she's paying attention to him. Right. A hottie. He's a little hottie. She's, like, looking for him. So she notices that he's definitely standing by the car. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, when she's like, oh, shit, I'm about to die. She's not. Because... Edward's standing over her and blocking the van. Oh, yeah. It said, I could hear Edward Cullen's low, frantic in my ear. Bella, are you all right? And, like, swoon. (laughs) I don't know why. Just, Bella, are you all right? And you're just like... When I was... When I was reading that part about where the, like, whole crash took place i was very confused as to what was happening it was like very hard for me to visualize just Mm -hmm. because there was so much happening at once which i think that might be the point because it was all very fast paced but like Mm -hmm. because i think and i could be wrong the way i was reading it he lifted the van up so it wouldn't crush her legs yeah he like stopped it from yeah crushing her legs he like lifted it up and moved her legs out from under the car or out from under the van there isn't how are you gonna exp- there is no explaining that <laughs> no 
And also, and I mean, nobody else notices, of course. Um, in the book here, they have the conversation about like he was over there and not standing by me. She's like, mm-hmm. no, I saw you over there. And this is where they have that conversation where he's like, please just trust me on this and just like say that I was beside you. Yeah. So she gets to the hospital and um, Tyler is actually the one that was driving. The- um, I don't know if she really knows Tyler much aside from this. I think that he was kind of involved in her friend circle mm-hmm. that she kind of made. But um, other than that, I don't think she really knows Tyler. And um, so they get to the hospital and she's fine. She finally meets Carlisle and <laughs> Carlisle gives her a look over and she, she's like, okay, I, I can see where my dad was talking about here. Like, this guy is very attractive. Right. And he- hello, doctor, instead of hello, nurse. Yeah, and she said that when he walked in, her jaw like physically dropped. Like, so he, yeah, he, has, he has great bedside manner. Mm-hmm. And um so she insists on not staying. Um the he Dr. Colin is like the whole school is out in the waiting room. So I don't think any of you guys are going back to school today. Um if you if you have a headache, you know, you might have a concussion, so let me know. But in the mean in in the meantime, you know, just load up on that Tylenol. Right. And she's like well, I she's like I I, mean, I have to confront Edward. Like she she knows what she saw, so right. she confronts Edward, and Edward is like he's almost desperate to convince her on that what she saw, right? And like I mean, he's scared that she's gonna find out what what happened. He is. It was it was pure instinct on his part, and. I mean, it was technically a mistake because they're supposed to be charading human being right. out. Like, just among the public, they're supposed to just be normal. And um, mm-hmm. Edward is obviously, like, used to manipu- being able to manipulate people. And so he kind of gets frustrated with her. Like, I can definitely kind of sense that he gets venomous with her. Right. And he leaves her in frustration, so they're obviously very hard-headed. Right. And the last thing that they say to each other is she says, why did you even bother? And he says, I don't know. And they walk away from each other. And get the teenage angst we all Yes. And at the very end of this chapter, like after, you know, Edward and Bella have their little tiff, (laughs) you know, she makes, she wants to make her swift exit. She doesn't want to like talk to her classmates. She just wants to go home. And then like when they're in the car, she said that this is the first time she like didn't care that she was in the police cruiser because she just wanted to go home so bad. And then Mm -hmm. this is where Charlie tells her like, you're going to have to call your mom. He basically called her, obviously, and told her. Mm-hmm. And Honestly, Renee freaks out about everything. Yes. She's freaking the fuck out. Right. Right. And I also, like, at the very, very end of the chapter, like, the very last sentence was, like, this is the first night that uh, Bella dreams of Edward. Yes. <laughs> it's a wet dream. It's not a wet dream, but... <laughs> I mean, they, I mean will be. It's a, wet dream. it's a wet dream. We don't. She never says specifically what it is. So it be, yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be. I don't know. I hope it is. No, I'm just. It kidding. was a wet dream because she was crying before she went to bed. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's a wet dream in that sense. Well, I guess she does say what the dream is. In this chapter. She does <laughs> say what the dream about is in the next chapter. It doesn't sound necessarily to me. But no. I mean, unfortunately, I don't, know what, I don't. As far as I've read, I don't know what she's into. <laughs> um. So, chapter four is called "Invitation," and she describes her dream as very dark, and there was a dim light that was radiating from Edward's skin. And mm-hmm. as he walked away from her, leaving her in the darkness, she uh, 
she couldn't catch up to him because, of course, you don't want to be in the dark. So she tries to chase him, but she just can't quite get to him. Mm-hmm. And, and no- um, so actually a month passes after she describes her dream. Yeah, and they basically just don't, she has no contact with Edward. Like, they, she sees him in class and stuff, but they don't talk. They don't say anything mm-hmm. to each other. They just kind of ignore each other. And, like, he's, he's just trying to stay away from her. I, I just realized this when you were reading that first sentence. But the part where it says, in what dim light that seemed... There, wait, in what dim light there was seemed to be radiating from Edward again. Is that foreshadowing? I yes. feel like it is, yeah. Since sparkles. 100%, I feel like. Like, I, I, don't, I don't see why else she would have put that detail in there. Right. I didn't. I I didn't even catch that the first time I read it, and just reread it now, and I was like, foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was always like a a thing in English class. It was like, oh, I got that detail. I got that detail. So she's kind of the one that gives in to the lack of contact. Mm-hmm. Bella is like, "Hello, Edward," and that kind of clues him in on the fact that she's willing to play nice now. She's not gonna. She's not going to poke him until she gets answers. Right. And then this is the chapter where we get into the dance thing. So oh, yes. Jessica asks, like, you weren't planning on asking Mike, were you? And she's like, no, I'm not going. So then Jessica asks Mike. And then Mike is... Mike and Jessica at lunch are, like, not talking to each other. So Bella's like... Oh my god, did he Oof. tell her no? Oof. <laughs> but then when they get into biology, he like asks her like, "Do you want to ask me?" And she's uh, like, oh, "Uh, no." No. <laughs> but she, no. <laughs> but she didn't want to get into like the reason why because like she's clumsy and can't dance, so she's like, "I'm going to go to Seattle that day." And, and I don't like, think he deserves an answer. No is a complete sentence. Deal with it. Right, exactly. And he's like, can't you go some other weekend? And I'm like, um, excuse me. This is my life. Let me make my own. First of all, if a guy ever, if it was a girl's choice dance and a guy ever came up to me and was like, I was wondering if you were going to ask me. I'd say, well, I'm definitely not asking you now. Yeah. Right? You're just going to come like up when- to me and say, why haven't you asked me yet? When somebody right. like asks you to take out the trash and that just makes you do it even less. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to the dance by your damn self. How about that? How about that? And your your best friend, Jill, aka your your right hand. <laughs> right? Ugh. I'd have been so bold. The righty or lefty. Also, yeah. the f- the fact when they were having that interaction and he asked her, like, did you ask somebody else? And he was like glancing, like giving dirty stares to Edward, I'd have been like, boy, if you get, you're not my boy to go. No. Right. You aren't paying my bills. You don't wipe my ass. Get out of here. Right. And then, but get- like, after Mike leaves, Edward and Bella, like, have a moment where they can't look away from each other, and she's like, what does it say? It says, I stared back, surprised, expecting him to look away quickly. But instead, he continued to gaze with probing intensity into my eyes. There was no question of me looking away. My hands started to shake. And I'm like, ooh, they having a moment. (laughs) Yes. After a month. She really does kind of like, she confronts him, basically. Like, Edward is being very wishy-washy on everything. Like... He ignores her for like a straight month. And then finally, it's like he was just really interested in what what just happened. He kind of observed. And yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's just kind of played bad boy. And it's like it's better off if we avoid each other. Right. Because like when he says Bella and she's like, um, we're speaking again. Uh And she's like, he's like, no, not really. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Fuck you. Get out of my life. Shut up. Yeah. Oh, and this poor girl. She tries to be so like she tries to be 
smooth. Like, you know, she's like, turns her head away from him and is like, turns around, but she accidentally just like drops all of her fucking books. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that would be, that would be terrible. At that point, I would just leave them there and run. Like, I mean, she, she thought about it. Yeah. yeah. I would have. I would have. Can this? <laughs> This oh, and he's already Rico Suave. Picking up her books. Mm-hmm. And this is the part where she she kind of talks to him about, like, oh, I bet you regret not letting that van kill me. <laughs> and oh, he's yeah. like, he's like, what? Of course I don't regret it. <laughs> and she's like, I know that you do. And they're like kind of going back and forth like that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you so don't know after- anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, bitch. After- <laughs> Shut up. I'll fight you. I like her whole situation with like Edward. Like she's obviously really like just mad now, especially since she like dropped her books. Mm-hmm. And she so she walks away and Eric is at her truck. <laughs> we know where this is going. Oh god. <laughs> So Eric is like, go to the dance with me. And she's like, "Mm, no. Luckily, she already has an excuse that she made up. Right. And she's able to stick with a consistent story, basically, with everybody. Right. How bad would you feel if you were a guy and you asked a girl to a dance? And the first thing she says was, well, it's girl's choice. <laughs> I'd be like, never mind. <laughs> like, okay, so I'm gonna clearly... fuck myself. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna fuck myself. Know. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the first thing that she says. <laughs> this, is, this is snort safe, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first words that came out of her mouth was, well, it's, it, isn't it girl's choice? I'd have been like, just forget it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm gonna go cry now. <laughs> Yeah. And then and Edward she- is observing all of this. Right. And then she gets into her truck and pulls out to like leave, but then Edward is in front of her waiting for his siblings like a douchebag first of all. <laughs> he's like instigating all of this. Like he's like, "Oh, Tyler's in on this too because he could read his mind." He's like, "Tyler's finna ask her to dance." Right. And oh, then, like, I, going back to that, it's just like, why would you do that? I would want to avoid that girl for the rest of my life. <laughs> right. Like, if I ran, if I owned my van, I would not want to talk to them ever again. No. Also, in what world do you think it's appropriate to almost kill someone with a van and then ask them <laughs> to dance? <laughs> hey, I know I almost killed you, but like, <laughs> do you want to go dance? <laughs> I know you, you planned on driving me. Like, I don't want to <laughs> ever be around you in a vehicle again. Right? We're taking a cab. <laughs> There's probably no cabs in Forks. I'd have to, yeah. Charlie would have to take them in their police car <laughs> with the sirens on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, Tyler asked her, and she was like, No, I'm going to Seattle. And he's like, oh, yeah, but we still have prom. And you're just like. <laughs> right. And you can see. Don't. Don't. Ed- you can see Edward laughing, shaking from laughter in the car. And she's like, does he know what's happening back here? Because, like, she doesn't know. Yeah. Um, oh, he knows. If- oh, he if- knows. If I was Bella, I would go up to Edward and I'd say, I know what you think. I know what you don't know what I think I know. <laughs> Like, I'd do one of those on him. I'd say, I would do that to him. Get real close to his face. Just like, I know. You don't think I know what I know, but I know what you think I know. <laughs> right. Oh, and so Jessica calls her and is like, when she, when Billy gets home, Jessica calls to let her know that Mike did accept her invitation to the dam. Mm-hmm. And Bella said, ooh! Ooh! He to the he said, yes. <laughs> and now she Jessica really knows that. about Bella's Seattle excuse. Yes. And that basically covers her ass. Right. And um so she kind of thinks about Edward and 
what he meant by it's better that we should just be friends because she knows nothing about this guy other than the fact that she witnessed him push a fucking van off of her <laughs> and he's trying to convince her it didn't happen right and what else here oh he's just asking she lets him know that she wants to go to seattle like, her plans or her excuses are now plans for sure yeah. and he's like why do you want to go clear to seattle and she's like, i wanted to get a few books right and i mean why not and he's like you're going by yourself and I mean, she lets him know that Phoenix is a pretty big city, but I still wouldn't let my teenage daughter go clear to Seattle alone. Right. Like, I Seattle's mean, like, it's kind of dangerous. And it's still a city that, like, she doesn't know that well. Like, Phoenix, yeah, she exactly. grew up in Phoenix. So she knows Phoenix, uh -huh. but Seattle is a completely new city to her. And he offers to go with her, but she doesn't really, she's not, she doesn't want that. Right. She's on her dad going with her. Yeah. <laughs> while she's trying on shit. Right. And she's like mm. getting out of her car, she notices that Edward is right next to her the next is, morning at yeah. school. So yeah, sorry. I kind of skipped some stuff. <laughs> but it's kind of brief that she mentions when it's the next morning. Mm -hmm. Um and then she's like, Oh, well, I get out of my car and Edward's right by me. And uh, he, she accidentally drops her key into a puddle, and she has Edward grabs it right before she realizes it. Mm -hmm. And it, she's like, "You just basically appeared out of thin air. Like you're trying to convince me that that whole van situation didn't happen, and you're doing a piss poor job at reinforcing your argument." Right. She's asking, she's confronting him about why he blocked her off. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, well, I might have known about Tyler. <laughs> and she literally asks him if he has, like, a multiple personality disorder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Like, really, though, Edward? Do you? Do you, Edward? I, f I feel like at the end of chapter four is, like, when we start to see the shift between, like, he... And still trying to be, like, mysterious and secretive, and he doesn't want to give, like, too much away. But at the same time, I feel like he genuinely wants her to figure out, like, who he really yeah. is. He wants Bella to, like, he wants Bella, basically, TLDR. He, he wants that. Yeah. And I feel like this, she's such a curiosity to him at this point, just from the fact that he can't use his abilities on her. She smells delicious and all this so it's like how it's just natural curiosity that he wants to figure out what the fuck's going on mm -hmm. and, and he, but he knows it's wrong right and another thing that like i feel like draws edward to bella is that she's not like other girls <laughs> She's not like other girls. She's so but, like, quirky. But like quirky. really, like she's not selfish. Like she moved here from Phoenix to make herself miserable so she, her mom could be happy. happy. And like that's not something other teenagers would do. Out of the five chapters that I've read, this one has been my favorite. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I like want to reread it because I just liked it so much. I was just like mm -hmm. smiling all throughout. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just so it's so good. It's just so so good. Just it's just so easy to like just picture yourself being her and having like <laughs> yes. <laughs> right well, so like also this experience and just you're just like <laughs> <laughs> and right. this is like super cringy it's super cringe but i'm gonna say it anyways but you say, say it. it i was reading the fifth <laughs> chapter and i would like read it i was home alone at this time thank god but <laughs> i was reading it and then i was like replaying the scenario in my head like what if this were me and edward 
And I was like saying like, the stuff out reading loud. Reading Bella's parts. Yeah. Like, in my in my tone and like changing some of the words to make it sound more like me. And then I like yeah. got done with the chapter. I was like, that was embarrassing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, like, I think I, I, I do that too. <laughs> Same. Because I was like, Same. I can relate to Bella, but certain aspects of how she is. Like, like I read parts where like she was like saying like his teeth were really white and i was like if it was me i'd be like oh my god your teeth are so white or like when she was touching his hand and his hands were super or when his hand touched hers and it was super cold i would have been like oh my god your hands are freezing i like, know I like, <laughs> like i was rereading it the i want to like, like five times green. as myself <laughs> i want to like green screen you into twilight now <laughs> like cover like covering bella and just like you just like oh my god you're freezing <laughs> hands are so fucking cold <laughs> i'm just picturing you now instead of bella and it's really funny to me <laughs> and i was also with the part with carlisle when they were in the hospital and she he like was like you know touching her temples and she like winced but i think she winced partially because he was cold i was like imagining myself and i was like, oh cold hands it's probably because this hospital is so cold yeah that's what i was gonna say is like doctor's hands are always right i was like this is like emb- i was like this is embarrassing i was like maybe i should get into screenwriting it's like we, we all just, i guess <laughs> we all just turn into like 14 year old girls again with twilight i feel basically really you revert back takes me back man coming from a first time reader you should definitely read the books because this slaps (laughs) (laughs) so blood type and so i think it's funny i know it's kind of just a weird detail but I think it's funny how Bella is late to English class. Like we kind of see this is her first um this is her first time where she is is kind of irresponsible. Like Edward causes her to be irresponsible mm-hmm. because she's always turns her homework out on time. She always gets it she always makes it to class on time. She's she reads like she's actually late to class because of Edward. Yeah. And she's she even makes it a point to say that the morning passes in a blur so like she when she usually pays attention in class like she kind of was just not even thinking about it at that point right she got edward on the mind she got edward on the mind and don't we all she she makes (laughs) it to lunch that day kind of breaks out of the haze because she's looking for edward and she notices that he's not at the lunch table and she's like kind of disappointed she's like what the heck where did he go and jessica's like Psst. edward cullen is staring at you again and she notices that he's alone at a lunch table and he's motioning over to her with his index finger for her to join him Ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> this is like honestly, and she's like maybe, maybe he needs help with his biology homework <laughs> yeah okay right uh-huh. but i feel like she's just saying to make jessica feel better yeah like she knows what jessica's obviously she's hurting she's hurting right quit being such a desperate bitch jessica right. thought <laughs> Oh, and this yeah. is this oh, is sorry. the part where you get to hear him say, like, she walks up to him and she's like, this is different. And he's like, I decided as long as I was going to hell, I might as well do it <laughs> thoroughly. Which in the movie, he that says so it good. as they're walking into school and puts her, his arm around her. As uh, Yeah, as they kind of first go public with them dating. And this is like far before that. Right, um, yeah. But he's he's i i don't know even in the movie i think the quote works out even though they placed it differently mm-hmm. but i i love that line me he's too. just <laughs> he totally gives up yeah he's like whatever he's like i'm gonna do what i want when i want <laughs> who i want In the whole with who i want oh. <laughs> yes the Kate. whole um 
part with them talking at the lunch table, it like it legit made my dick hard. I was like, <laughs> I loved it so much. I was such a stan. I was like, this is so good. I was like, I could reread this like 16 times. I thought Why? it was so good. His charm like literally just like oozes off of the pages. It's like, it's like intoxicating. I was like, what is <laughs> happening to me? I was like, I literally felt I felt young again. <laughs> young again. <laughs> I just think of the old lady from SpongeBob that wants chocolate. Like I don't know why that popped into my head. When you <laughs> <said> chocolate, <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> but it was so good. And his his like it says uh his crooked smile, and I feel like. Uh, Robert Pattinson does that so well in the mm-hmm. movie. Like his kind of like his I'm like I I want to hide it, but I'm laughing and smiling kind of, and it's like boy, I'm a fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your dick. <laughs> right. Um. And-, and yeah, she mentions that it's like you just say you don't want to make a good friend a lot. Right. He's trying to figure her out because obviously he he can't just flip through a brain like he usually can with mm-hmm. other people. And she's like, "Are you having any luck with that?" And I I think that it's just funny with that. Like, like even though she's intimidated by him, she can comments like that. Like old Bella, she's so cute. Part yeah the the part that we were just talking about I feel like we all like that part because I have that underlined because the part where he says my pussy like, yeah that's exactly what he said <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what he said it's on page eighty nine it's exactly what he said <laughs> man it's Stephanie Myers you Stephanie Meyer you are a, a you are a literary genius. <laughs> I know like people criticize her all the time. It's like I found so many writing mistakes in here. This is just trash. Her writing is trash. And it's like it's so it's your good. opinion don't matter. It's Leave not me alone. trash. It's beautiful. It's beautiful it's shiny art. gold. <laughs> it's no, art. It's not gold. It's diamonds. We mine in diamonds. Like a diamond. Diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> Um, I say I love when she said my pussy. <laughs> like, imagine if that was oh, actually my she pussy. Say, she says what the crow because she can't say like what the hell. Yeah, she was like, pussy. And Edward said to Bella, "My pussy." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. So where were we? <laughs> And um, well, Edward notices he he's kind of starts picking up that Bella has a bit of a temper, and I don't really think we get that in the movie at all. Like she oh, just no. seems like they you want get it her in the to last seem one. more. Uh, yeah, the last one we get it, um, oh, and I think like she should have brought that into like more parts of the movies. Like we see it, I think they pass it off more as like bravery in the movies than they do like her temper. Mm-hmm. And she she doesn't like double standards, she says. And oh, he's picking up on Mike Mike's thoughts and he refers to her him as her boyfriend. And Which is she, weird. She, yeah. Because that means like Mike is giving off those thoughts like Bella's Ugh. mine. Right. Yeah, Blech. exactly. Blech. Everybody. Blech. 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 Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> um oh and he he's trying to make an effort to like um like have interested food he's like are you hungry and i think that he's just trying to make an effort like he's like oh wait yeah people have to eat right Yeah, and he wants to hear a theory she has about what he is. And she just like basically references Spoderman. Spoderman, radioactivity, kryptonite, and he's like, No, I'm none of those. You're mine. And he's like he's like, that's all superhero stuff. What if I'm not the superhero? And she's like What if I'm Oh. The villain. The villain. 
But so like she realizes then that she know or like she realizes then that he's actually dangerous. Like she understands mm-hmm. it. And but she's like, not bad. She doesn't think he's bad. And he's no. like, you're wrong. And I feel like in Midnight Sun, you get a lot of like that emotion where it's like, yeah, oh. he, like he he 100% understands what he is and what he's capable of. I mean, especially since spoiler alert, he's killed people before easily. Yeah. Like he knows how easily he could just snap people in half and then <laughs> their blood. And, and especially like yeah. him wanting to drink Bella's blood before. And knowing like what the thoughts that went through his head. Like, right. He was he was about to kill kill that whole classroom just to get a crack at Bella, right? Can yeah. I just say this like scenario? I feel like only works story where like you know someone. I mean, like even before reading the books, I feel like most people knew that like I mean, even just by reading the back of the books, you know, like yeah, exactly. I was he just had about a to thirst for her blood, so. Like, imagine if this was, like, in real life and, like, a guy in your high school tried to act like Edward Cullen. It would be so, it would be, like, <laughs> terrible. You'd be like, boy, you ain't dangerous. You would do yeah. that in high school. I'm a dangerous. <laughs> and then if he really started doing that shit, I, I might have been fast. I would have been like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, like, a lot easier to imagine. But, I mean, obviously... It's different because in this story, you know, Bella obviously witnessed him do Mm -hmm. feats that no normal human could do. So she's kind of like, what's up with you? (laughs) What's up? What's up? And Edward lets her know that um, they're going to go. Well, Bella's like, we're going to be late for class. And Edward's like, well, I'm not going because it's healthy to skip every once in a while. And she's like, "Mm, no, I'm too much of a coward. Right. She heads to class. She's like, ooh, he's kind of a badass. <laughs> ooh, he's, he's not me class. though. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to class. <laughs> and Edward is also very intrigued by the fact that Bella doesn't like blood <laughs> and doesn't like like the smell of blood. Oh right. yeah, just like just a little bit of blood that's exposed. Bella can smell it. It's very. Like, as she said, it's very pungent to her, too. Like, I, I don't think it's too weird that she can smell blood like that, because I, I can. Mm-hmm. And they get her to the nurse, and... Um, and Mike is supposed to be taking her to the nurse. They get, like, halfway there. It's Mr. Like, can Mike. We just, can we just sit down on the sidewalk? I can't go any further. And then all of a sudden, he hears... Or she hears Bella, and it's freaking edward's Edward. voice yes mike, daddy come to save the day <laughs> mike has just totally had his valor stolen mm-hmm. by edward his mortal enemy and I, it's <laughs> funny because like i was trying to remember mike's name and so i just googled like twilight male characters and like i saw his name and there's mike in bella fan fiction out there oh <laughs> I hate and, Mike. And, like, there's, e- there's even one where, like, Bella or, no, like, Edward and Mike get into a fight. And I'm like, okay, that'd be over in seconds. Like, what is even the point of writing about it? <laughs> like, Mike, even if Edward wasn't a vampire, Mike would get the shit beat out of him, I feel like. <laughs> so, Edward, Edward steals Bella away from Mike. He comes in and swoops her up in his arms. Like a telenovela. He swoops her into the nurse's office. The nurse is just, oh my goodness. <sighs> There's always one that is just so disgusted from blood. Mm-hmm. Oh, and she mentions, um, you were right. And he's like, I usually am, but what in particular this time? It's like, okay, mister. She's like, <laughs> ditching class is healthy. <laughs> right. And mm. he says, you scared me there. And then after a while, or she said that his tone made it sound like he was best confessing a humiliating, humiliating weakness. Oh my goodness. Can't talk. But 
And then he says, I thought Newton was dragging your dead body off to bury it in the woods. Oh, and God. how I took that was like, he said, you scared me there for a minute. And like, he was scared for her. Like, he was worried about her. And like, he cares about her that much that he was so worried that she was hurt. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, he's so protective already. And- the fact that, like, he thinks that Newton is dragging your body off to bury it in the woods. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think Edward knows some details about Mike that <laughs> nobody else does. <laughs> right. Well, that's just, like, scary. an odd observation to say. <laughs> like, Right. And, like, I feel like that sentence, like, that you scared me there for a minute, he's, like, admitting that she's his weakness. Mm-hmm. So cute. I didn't even think about that, though. The fact that Edward could read minds and the fact that he said, I thought he was, like, dragging your body out yeah. into the woods. I'd been like, <laughs> Don't keep me up at night. After Bella, like, finds out, you know. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, Edward's truth. I yeah. would be like, I would literally, like, Wait that's one minute. of those situations where you're lying in bed at night and your eyes open. <laughs> like, what did he mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god I'm just imagining Megan as Bella again <laughs> um so yeah and then they're basically Mike. just they're basically Sorry. just chilling in the nurse's office and then all of a sudden they come in and like we have another one and lo and behold, Mike comes in again. <laughs> Mike. But he's green, and Edward is like, Bella, leave. And right. she's like, she listens to him, and he's like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You listen to me. And she's like, well, I can smell blood. And he's like, humans can't smell blood, or people can't smell blood. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they can, Edward. You can't tell me I can't smell something. <laughs> like... <laughs> I can smell I what I want to smell. <laughs> oh, there. She says rust and salt. Yeah. I didn't even remember yeah. her saying salt. So me and Bella are basically the same person. <laughs> basically. Are we basically all? Bella. Bella. Yeah. There's Everybody's a little Bella, Bella in all of us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, when I first read that part where he was like, humans can't smell blood. But like, I didn't, wasn't thinking the fact that maybe like, he's a vampire and he thought humans can't smell it because they're humans. I was like, thinking well, what are you talking about? I was like, I know what blood smells like. I was like, is there something wrong? I was like, do I not know something that, like, <laughs> Stephanie we- Meyer? Like, what is wrong <laughs> with me? You we are have a vampire. abilities. <laughs> they're, uh, they're special, <laughs> for sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Mike is still pretty frustrated at Bella for, well, he's frustrated that Edward kind of got to see deal is valor but i'm sure he's also kind of mad at bella in some weird way and he's like you look better Mm -hmm. it's like oh my god mike get over yourself and um and he said um he's asking her about the beach she's like okay i'll be there whatever and he's we're gonna meet at his dad's store around 10 and he leaves and he's like kind of still upset. He or and they leave, and she's like, oh, "I gotta go to gym." And Edward's like, mm, "No, you don't." And he dazzles Mrs. Cope. Ms. Yes, Miss Cope. Do you need to be excused, Edward? And <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah," and Bella does too. <laughs> yeah. And then, no, honestly, after she got sick like that, the nurse would have been like, yeah, you're not going to the gym. Right, exactly. And then when they're basically, he's like, yeah, I'll make sure she gets home safely. So they're walking outside and she's like, so are you going to go to La Push with us? And he's like, oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey, no. I, and and he kind of passes it off as like I don't think invited and Bella's like uh, I mean I just invited you 
and mm -hmm. he's like, "Oh no, I don't want to upset Mike. You don't. We don't want him to snap." Right. I'm getting like school shooter vibes from oh, Mike God. now that <laughs> Edward has like peered into his mind. Like, <laughs> oh lord, he just makes all these comments, right? And then <laughs> Mike, sh Mike. And then basically she's trying to leave and he she's like going towards his her truck and he's like, ooh, ooh no, you're not, baby girl. Be with me. So then he basically drags her back to his car and he's like, get in the fucking car, bitch. <laughs> so she's yeah, like, and he like uh so he, he kind of drags her in and I mean he gets in the driver's side and she like kind of refuses. She's like, "I am perfectly fine. Let me drive home." Mm -hmm. And he's like, mm -mm, "I'm. I'll drag you back." Like, I'll, like he'll. He's basically just like, hey, hey, "You're getting in here, whether you like it or not." <laughs> she notices that the music playing in his car, Claire de Lune, how classic. And you know, you know, Debussy. He sounded surprised, and. If 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 think it's funny, like her, she says her mom plays a lot of classical music, and just with how spazzed out her mom is all the time, that like surprises me. Yeah, maybe if she didn't play classical music, her mom would be like, Wah! "Yeah, that's <laughs> that is her mom is like, she's kind of <laughs> like a uh, fluffy in Harry Potter, like she's yeah. sated by the music." So. And she does describe her mother to Edward. Um, supposedly she's prettier than Bella, but I think that's just Bella being nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe she sees her mom in a little bit of a different light than she sees herself. Right. And she admits that her mother is her best friend and that it's the conversation is kind of making her sad because she misses mom. And I understand that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he honestly, he asks her how old because when she talks about cooking for her mom and like how she notices her mom is kind of unpredictable. Like he's like, are you sure you're 17? Yeah. And then another thing he asked if he, she approved of Phil and he, she's like, well, does it matter? I want her to be happy. And he's like, well, I wonder if she would want the same for you. Like, basically, like, I can make you happy, Bella. Yeah, and I think, like, he... Those are good questions to ask her because she's selfless. Mm -hmm. Like, personally, I think, like, you can... You, that definitely is a thing. Like, I think Bella is definitely, like, that's kind of a character fault for her is, like, the fact that she's so selfless. Like, she has no sense of self-preservation almost and right. i think that's why she's in danger so much and it's just like belly you gotta start asking yourself like what's gonna make you happy and i think edward is the person that kind of has her start asking those questions for herself right also another point about the f about phil was um the last time she had mentioned phil to edward was like two months ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was like one conversation, like like barely a conversation. And he like remembered the name and everything. Cause yeah. Chapter. She like is kind of shocked that he even remembered that detail that she had told him. Right. I think that the fact that Phil like is very athletic and stuff, I'm sure him and Bella have a kind of a hard time being around each other. Right. They probably don't have that much in common. No. He's like, oh, is Phil kind of like... He's not too scary then. Like, that's not why you want to be around him. And she's like, oh, no. Like, I don't know what you mean by scary, but... um, She's like, oh, yeah, multiple facial piercings. That too, which I think is funny. Mm -hmm. And he just asks mm -hmm. if she thinks that he could be scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she's like, I think you could be if you wanted to. And he he kind of, she, I mean, since she, he's asking her all questions, she finally kind of starts to feel comfortable to ask him. 
and she asks, the Collins adopted you? And I mean, I don't know why that would be like a, a question. Like, you're adopted, right? Like, I don't know. I, I think that's kind of weird. But, right. And he, fucking adopted loser. Yeah. And she asks, <laughs> she's like, what happened to your parents? Like, that's so personal. Right. I feel like their relationship gets like real deep, real fast. Oh, yeah. Like, they so get maybe into she the just deep felt questions. comfortable to ask him the stuff. Right. They if, died many years ago. Like, what would you know? Yeah, if, like, what does that mean? You're 17. It can't be that long ago. And then she's just asking about, he's, she's like, and your brother and sister? And he's like, um, they're going to be mad if they have to yeah. wait for me in the rain. So I got to go. Especially Rosalie. Rosalie is like going to combust in the flames. I mean, we don't know much about her at this point, but like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I just say, no, it, in the books, no one ever uses, uses an umbrella. And, like, they reference, like, like Bella wore a raincoat. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, it. But, like, why doesn't anyone here use an umbrella if it's constantly raining? So I also have a little bit of input on this. It's super windy here. So, like, if it is raining, okay. I've tried to use an umbrella. And it just doesn't fucking work out. Like, mm. and I think when it is raining like that all the time, it's probably more convenient just to wear a raincoat or, like, some kind of just... A, like jacket that repels water all the time because I mean it's probably going to start raining at any point in time of the day so you might as well just have a jacket that is made for that that makes sense there's nothing more embarrassing than when you have an umbrella and the wind blows it inside <laughs> out and then yeah, you're, you're just like getting don't wet look at and me. you're struggling don't look at me <laughs> so and Edward kind of lets her know that he's got to go pick up his brothers and sisters. And he lets her know, well, have a good time at the beach. Um, just don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And don't be offended. But you seem to come off as one of those people who just attract accidents like a magnet. So right. try not to fall into the ocean or get run over by anything. All right? Damn. <laughs> I said, okay, are you referencing the time when I nearly died? <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's got her pegged. Right. I'll see what I can do. And she kind of takes that offensively, like, yeah. <laughs> and he's he just kind of thinks it's funny, I guess. And he <laughs> drives away to pick up El Brother, El Sisto. Mm-hmm. And that is the end of the five chapters. Yay! Yay! That three took hours. Forever. So maybe, maybe these podcasts will actually be really long. Maybe, or we'll get like used to it as we go along. We'll yeah, and I mean, shorter. maybe if they are long, we can start doing like three chapters instead of five. Like there is a lot to cover, kind of. Um, right. But, yeah, who cares? I mean, I personally, I don't mind podcasts that are very long because, I mean, it's just something that I tend to listen to aside when I'm doing other things. But mm -hmm. let us, give us some input. Like, do you guys like long episodes? Do you guys think it would be a better idea to just do three chapters? Let us right. know. You know you guys can hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and this Discord. This Discord, I think, is just a really good communication mm -hmm. uh, medium for everybody to use. Because it's kind of our own little community. Like, you can have book and movie suggestions on here you want to make. We have our media share group that we kind of share pictures on of things that we talk about. Or, like, maybe even vines and shit that we reference. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and then the announcements page, kind of when we get more into, like, releasing things and recording, I think that page will be used more. But, I mean, maybe eventually we can just have, like, a shit posting group, too, that we can just go and shit post in together. But, yeah, yes. I highly suggest using Discord if you are planning on sticking around the podcast. Yeah. If not, you guys know we're everywhere else. <laughs> 
Yeah, and um, we will link all of those below so you can, well, like in the description, so yes. you guys can go check those out. Uh huh. And if you have anything yes. you want us to read, like after the Twilight series, like put it in the book discussion or in the book and movie suggestions. Like, do that, please. <laughs> yes. And I kind of like was thinking it was like, oh my God, like we really are going to read through the whole Twilight series. Like, but then again, when I think about it, it is probably only going to be about five episodes that we do to cover this whole series. Well, this whole and book. Be yeah, with this, this whole book, at least. Yeah. And then, I mean, in that context, I don't think it's going to be that bad. But, right. I mean, let us know, like, maybe if you think, like, all right, take a break between, like, New Moon and Eclipse, maybe, or something, and read another book. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get twi tired of the Twilight series then, and we'll read mm -hmm. something else in between here. Will we, though? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Trisha, we Trisha's the Twilight stand. She'll, she'll, uh, She'll always love Twilight, but I mean, I think we we're kind of feeling this, so. Yeah, I think so, I'm, too. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it so far, but if we wanted to, like, break it up, like, obviously, I would definitely want to finish this all the way to the end of yeah. Breaking Dawn, um, but if we wanted to, like, split it up, like, maybe take a break and maybe read something that's, like, maybe just, like, short and sweet just to talk about, like, or watch, a, like, a movie and talk about a certain yeah. movie. That would be fine. Eventually, I don't know if you guys would want to, but I think it would be cool to cover, like, comics and stuff. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Yeah. Um, because I know, like, Trisha likes anime. Maybe we anime, like just quick reaction podcasts to like anime episodes but i know i don't know you guys let us know <laughs> so i think this is kind of a good point to cut it off so mm -hmm. i'm assy i'm trisha and i'm megan <laughs> and thank you guys so much for by our second podcast we'll be covering chapters Six through eleven next time. And or six through nine, I guess, depending on the length. Yeah. So we'll keep you guys updated on that one though. And I'm not sure when this will be released, but um our editor will he's pretty good. He's he's pretty good. So we will see you guys next time. Thank you for Bye. Listening. Love you. Bye.